Hello, welcome to Shane Fix. Today I'm going to show you how to swap the connectors on your LiPo batteries. Stay tuned. I use XT90s. Some people prefer XT60s. Doesn't really matter. The same technique applies to swap out the connectors on a LiPo battery. I got these XT90 connectors off Amazon, so I'll link to them in the description. I really like this version of XT90s because it has protection for the wires so you don't accidentally short something out. Once you've done the install a couple times, it gets pretty easy. I like to put the connector together like this because when you put the other end on, it helps dissipate the heat when you're soldering so that it doesn't warp the case. And here's the battery that I'm going to swap out the connector on. I bought this from someone else and it looks like they put an XT60 connector on here. And for this type of LiPo battery, this is just too small in my opinion. If the gauge of these cables is too big, you can barely get them into these XT60 connections. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and swap it out. Quick word of advice. When you're cutting LiPo battery cables, do one cable at a time. If you cross over both cables with your cutters, you're going to have a very bad day. That's the best advice I can give you up front. Don't cross both cables on a LiPo battery. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so what I typically do is I'll cut one side, put a little bit of tape, electrical tape around it, and then cut the other. So I'll cut this side first. Notice I'm not anywhere near that other wire. So what I'll do is I'll protect this until I'm ready to work with it and then cut the other side off. On this XT90 connector you want to make sure that you get positive to positive and ground to ground. First we need to prep our cable and our terminal. This is an electrician's tool that I've had for over 10 years. I'll look on Amazon, see if I can find something like it. If I can, I'll link to it in the description. And again, work on one wire at a time. I'm gonna keep this one taped until I'm ready for it. I'm gonna start with the positive. Very lightly wind it. You don't wanna break any of those little tiny cables off, so you wanna lightly touch it, lightly wind it. And put a little flux on the terminal. You'll hear a fan here. Hopefully it's not too loud. It's gonna get rid of all the nasty fumes. You don't want to breathe them in. Just to make sure there's no oxidation, we want to coat the inside of this terminal. Next, we'll prep the cable, put a little bit of flux on it, just like we did on the terminal. And for the cable, I actually like to heat from the bottom, feed the solder from the bottom. And what happens is that cable actually sucks it up. The flux helps it flow into the cable. That way you get the whole cable saturated with solder. See, it sucked all that up right to the center of that cable. And this way we make sure the bottom of this cable is prepped for the terminal as well. And I'm just holding that heat on there and all that solder is getting sucked right into that cable. And this is where you want to use quite a bit of flux because we want that solder to flow all through that cable into the terminal and completely saturate everything. See how much of that solder I'm feeding into there? It's just flowing everywhere. You want that to be one very solid connection. If you can't tell where the terminal ends and the cable begins, and you've done a good job. And next we'll do the negative terminal. And I usually inspect the bottom while I'm looking at it from this side to make sure it's also saturated, and it is. And remember the number one rule, work on one cable at a time. So first we're gonna cover up this one. Again, we gotta prep both the cable and the terminal. Very light wind. Put a little flux on the cable, put a little flux on the terminal. And I'll turn on the fume extractor again so it'll get a little noisy. Prep the terminal. It looks good. It's taking the solder well, so there's no oxidation I have to worry about. And again, I'm gonna heat from the bottom of the cable and work that solder into it. Very nice. And you wanna get that cable fitting in that terminal nice and snug. And again, we're gonna put plenty of flux on here to get that flow on everywhere. And by the way, this is no clean flux. What that means is it's not gonna conduct any of this electricity. So even if it was to drip down and cover both connections, you don't have to worry about it. Now we're just gonna top it off, make sure it's completely saturated.
And there we go. Then you can bring the little cable connector down and snap it into place. They're usually a little tight, so I usually put it face down on my desk and just press it down. It's a nice tight fit. 